if you're trying to do a 3x3 three three or a 4x4 four four MIMO deployment, you may find some of that is those antennas are disabled and you're only able to get perhaps a 2x2 two two MIMO. The other thing can happen is that the radios can turn off or it may keep rebooting itself. So it's really important to make sure that the access point is adequately powered. Now we've talked about the wire, we're going to go back even further and into the wired network and we want to talk now about those switches that our access points are going to connect to. The first thing we want to do is to make sure that if you're deploying 802.11n that it's connected to a gigabit Ethernet port. The reason is is that 802.11n can go up to 3, 450 and higher data rates. And so if we're not connected to a gigabit switch, we're going to find that the switch itself will become a bottleneck to the data rates that the users are experiencing. The second thing we need to do is to make sure there are enough PoE ports to support all of the access points that we want to deploy and connect to that switch. And to make sure that those PoE ports provide power at the desired level. You'll find many times when you go out and do a new 802.11 deployment or an upgrade from a legacy to an 802.11 deployment that the switches need to be replaced. And so it's a very common occurrence, very common thing that's overlooked. So please always, always, always look to see if your switches can effectively support the data rates and the power levels of your new 802.11n network. And of course, if you have to buy new switches to support the Wi-Fi network, make sure that there is enough rack spaces to actually install the switches. So one of the critical decisions that you need to make is whether you're going to be deploying your access points with a wireless controller, in which case you're going to deploy them in a lightweight mode, or are you going to deploy your access points without a wireless controller? In other words, they're going to operate in an autonomous mode. Now, autonomous mode works well for small businesses, home offices where you don't have many access points and there's not a requirement to reconfigure and change the network very often. The big disadvantage of working in autonomous mode is that every time you want to change something you have to reconfigure every access point and the risk of introducing an error is actually quite high. The advantage of using a wireless controller is that you can centrally provision and manage your access points. So any sizable organization would move from an autonomous mode to a light mate mode and deploy wireless LAN controllers. Now, although they can be rather expensive, Cisco does provide some smaller models, which I'll show you in a moment. And it's really a matter of weighing off the cost of buying this additional equipment versus the cost of having to configure every access point or the cost should there be an error in those configurations. Personally, I think that whenever you get above 5 or 10 access points, you want to start thinking about wireless LAN controllers. So part of your site survey is to determine not only the access points, but whether or not you'll be using wireless controllers, and if you are, which ones you'll be using. And this table here shows the wireless controllers that are provided by Cisco. And you can see they range in size depending on how many access points that you've deployed and how many clients will be connecting to the network. They range from the 2500 model, which is for smaller enterprises, now, even though it's a small standalone box, it still supports the Cisco Clean Air technology to help you manage your RF and detect interfering sources that can affect the performance of your wireless LAN. And then you can scale all the way up to the 7500, and that's a solution you'd use if you had lots of distributed branch offices, but you wanted to centrally manage it. So it's more of a data center solution. You can also see over on the right here that it has different 
insulation options, including rack mounted. Now, when you're ordering wireless controllers from Cisco, you also have to check on the AP licenses. So, Cisco wireless controllers normally come with some base AP licenses, and then you can add additional licenses as you need them. So make sure that you've ordered enough licenses for the number of access points that you're going to deploy and connect to the wireless controller. And then, just like we did with the switch, make sure there is enough rack space for any new controllers that you're ordering. So now you've determined what access points you want, what switching and wireless controllers you want in the infrastructure, the last piece you need to consider is the wireless appliances. Now the term appliance gets its name from the consumer industry where, for instance, you have appliances which are deployed in the kitchen and they simply plug in, you turn them on and they work. And so a wireless appliance provides a specific functionality that is designed to simply connect and be available on the network without the user needing to understand the complexity of the underlying operating systems and commands. The Cisco Wireless Location Appliance actually includes several tools which help you plan out your wireless LAN. A couple of these tools are used pre-deployment and a couple of the tools are used post-deployment. The two that are used pre-deployment are the planning mode tool and the location readiness assessment tool. And the two that are used post-deployment are the calibration tool and the location inspection tool. The planning mode tool is a way of estimating how many access points you need and where those access points should be placed in order to have sufficient access points to support the location service. And remember, every location should be able to see at least three access points in order to do accurate prediction of a device's location. The location readiness assessment tool is one that you use when you have an existing wireless LAN deployment and you want to see if that deployment is good enough to support location services. So using this tool can help you work out where you would have holes, where you might need to have additional access points. The calibration tool is then used after you've deployed and what it does is it allows you to take RSSI measurements in different locations and it captures that information into the tool in order to fine tune the location accuracy of the device. And lastly, the location inspection tool, again, post deployment, and it provides you a visual representation that helps you see the quality of your location tracking. And you can use this hand in hand with the calibration tool to literally improve the accuracy of your location system. And the more that you calibrate, the more that you inspect the quality of your measurements, then the better and the more accurate your location service is going to be. And lastly, make sure that you have the right licensing in place. And in order to display the information on locations within the Cisco wireless control system, you need to make sure that the Cisco wireless control system license is licensed with location services. Otherwise, no information will be exchanged between the Cisco wireless location appliance and the Cisco wireless control system. Now, the Cisco Mobility Service Engine supports a suite of different applications, or as Cisco call them, programs. One of the programs is the Context Aware software. And the other program is the Adaptive Wireless Intrusion Prevention System software, WIPS, as we refer to it. Now, the Context Aware software enables you to capture contextual information, things like what is the location, what is the temperature, 
what is the application being used. So the adaptive WIPS software is all about detecting potential threats to the network and alerting the administrator to these threats, classifying the different types of threats, and maybe even executing policies and taking actions to resolve some of these threats. And that software is actually integrated with the clean air technology because the clean air technology, remember, that's the one that's actually sniffing the RF and detecting interference sources, etc. So these tools work together. So again, understanding what these tools do is very important for you then saying, do I need this component in the network or not to meet my customer needs? And that should be part of your site survey proposal. And here in this table here, I'm just showing you that there's two different models of the mobility service engine. You've got the 3310, which supports up to 2,000 devices or you can go to the 3355, which goes up to 18,000 devices. Think about what your customer wants and whether or not these boxes are relevant for that deployment. So a few definitions for you to be familiar with. The mobility service engine, that's one of the appliances that Cisco provide and is used for monitoring and delivering mobility services such as the wireless intrusion prevention. The WCS, this is the Cisco wireless control system and this is what I use to manage my wireless network. And then WIPS, what is WIPS? Is a tool that will detect potential vulnerabilities on your network and take steps to actually prevent those vulnerabilities from impacting your day-to-day -day operations. So let's talk about what we covered in this lesson. We started talking about what's in a site survey report and we went through a list of things that you might want to consider from describing the facility to the customer needs through to all of the equipment that you're deploying and how you went about doing the site survey. We then took a look at the wireless control system and we gave a bit of an overview and of course this is a tool that's used to manage the wireless network but we can also use that to generate reports. And so what we did is we used that tool to load up our maps, to put in obstacles, to then decide where the access points are, to put information about the different antennas, and to generate heat maps, etc. And then to go into the reporting tool and actually generate a site survey report. And I demonstrated how you could do that and what that report looked like. We then went on and talked about the installation considerations. We went through an infrastructure checklist, which again, I think you'll find really helpful when you go out and do a site survey to remember the types of questions that you should be asking. We also took a look at the Cisco wireless controller portfolio of products. And then we finished up with a discussion on one of the Cisco wireless appliances called the mobile service engine. And we talked about how that integrates the clean air technology, has context aware capabilities, and also can support wireless intrusion prevention system capabilities. So I hope you really enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for watching.